Rise and shine, Mr. Freeman. Rise and shine. The original Half-Life redefined the first-person shooter genre with its focus on innovative gameplay, environmental storytelling, and some impressive graphical and technological advancements for the time. In 2004, Valve would continue to build on that success, furthering the story and expanding its various innovations even further with Half-Life 2, the game that arguably set a new standard for the industry. But while Valve has been synonymous with some incredibly creative and fantastic games over the years, one thing they usually aren't known for is, well, the consoles. Today we'll be taking another dive into the world of ports, talking about the very strange 2005 Xbox port for Half-Life 2, its development and technology, as well as why it even existed in the first place. The initial development for Half-Life 2 supposedly started very soon after the release of the original Half-Life. In the period of around 1999 to 2001, Half-Life 2's story ideas were being conceptualized and starting to take shape, while the development teams worked on the technical side, laying the groundwork for their new engine later known as Source. Not much is known about these stages, both due to Valve's secretive development nature as well as their smaller company status at the time, but it's clear that they were eager to continue the series and raise the bar even higher. Although much of the development was focused on a PC version, that wasn't the only thing that Valve had on their mind through this time. Early on, the idea was brought up to have Half-Life 2 also released on the original Xbox, the development of which would be headed by Jay Steely, a software developer at Valve that had a considerable amount of console experience in the past. The question often asked is, well, why? Why would Valve make the decision to release their flagship title on a considerably less capable platform? Well, there's a few reasons to note here. See, Half-Life 2 released on the PC in November of 2004, just a year before the release of the much newer Xbox 360, which wouldn't have been announced until May of 2005. The original Xbox port for the game released in mid-November 2005, actually just around a week before the 360 launched, so people often wonder why Valve would even bother releasing it. In Gabe Newell's 2005 interview with Xbox Magazine, he mentioned that the decision to make an Xbox port was decided very early on in development. In fact, they even had enough work done on the port to have it in a playable testing state while the PC version was also still in development alongside it. But Half-Life 2 faced a considerable amount of issues during the course of its roughly six-year development. On top of its various narrative changes as well as the infamous Valve leak in 2003, the game's development was stalled at many different points. Although no dates were referred to, we can probably guess the decision for an Xbox port was made sometime between 2000 and 2001, when the Xbox and its hardware were pretty much brand new and the idea of a port would have made much more sense back then, as Valve were expecting to have the game wrapped up over a year earlier than they initially did. Despite the setbacks and the release of the Xbox 360, Valve already had the Xbox port considerably far in development and would decide to continue on with it. So let's move on to the port itself. Technological boundaries exist on every platform, and consoles are no exception here, but home consoles were convenient and affordable, in turn becoming more popular and more powerful as time went on. The difficulty with console development for many games, especially ports from PC, was optimization. Half-Life 2 was impressive and advanced on nearly all fronts for 2004. Its graphics were certainly no exception here. But how do you take one of the most advanced games of the time and get it to run on a console with considerably less resources to work with? Sporting a Pentium 3 NV2A GPU and a whole 64 megabytes of DDR RAM, the Xbox was pretty advanced. Well, in 2001, at least. While its hardware trumped the older PlayStation 2 at the time, by 2005, it was getting on in age. Its measly 64 megabytes of RAM paled in comparison to the 512 megabytes of the average PC at the time, not to mention the various general advancements in computer technology across the board, the Xbox was certainly becoming dated. So Valve would have to get creative if they wanted this port to turn out at all playable, the biggest challenge being to ensure that the game would run smoothly without sacrificing too much of its visual fidelity or gameplay experience. The simple optimizations like a reduced 480p maximum resolution and a 30fps cap were put in place, but more concessions would need to be made here. Lowering texture quality and the complexity of geometry across its many levels are mainly what made the port different from its PC counterpart. Aside from the obvious graphical differences though, the entirety of Half-Life 2 is here and, well, playing pretty good on the Xbox. 
As for notable differences, there really aren't too many considering the technological boundaries of such a port. The menu backgrounds are static instead of the dynamic ones from the PC, and some of the areas in various levels have less detail, most notably just less physics props scattered about. Most of the reduction in detail is in the inaccessible background areas though, so it rarely affects the experience of the game overall. Much like the PS2 port of Half-Life, the levels also needed to be split up into smaller sized maps, meaning a few more loading screens along the way. Behind the scenes, the port runs on a build of the Source Engine from 2004 that was modified specifically for the Xbox. This is mostly just due to platform differences though, so it doesn't create many differences from the original version. It uses a unique save structure and different file types from that of the PC, but that's realistically it. Interestingly enough though, due to the game running on a pretty early Source Engine build, all the old movement quirks are included, like bunny hopping and prop flying. If you've played Half-Life 2, as I'm sure most of you have, then you're rarely going to be in for a surprise here. Again, obvious differences aside, there is very little disparity between the PC and Xbox version, at least in terms of content. The very apparent and pretty much unavoidable issue with this port is of course its performance. It's... okay? I guess? I mean, I'll be honest here, the game ran decent at best even in its most calm parts. Once faster movement comes into play, performance begins to wobble a bit. And once you introduce combat into the mix, well, it kind of just tanks. You kind of just have to brave through it until the intense scenes are over. But again, I think I have to give it the benefit of the doubt here. Cramming the entirety of Half-Life 2 onto an Xbox is sort of a technical feat, and this is to be expected. In fact, I would have expected many more compromises in the port itself, so for what it is, it's damn impressive, even if it is in fact the worst way to play Half-Life 2. Controls aren't an issue here, it's the standard layout, and mostly the same points I've made in my videos about Valve's other console ports. In summation, it works as intended, but once again, it's just one of those games that feels a bit weird without a mouse and keyboard. It's no secret that with its original release in November of 2004, Half-Life 2 was both a critical and commercial success worldwide, receiving near-perfect scores across the board, and having many gaming publications still ranking it in their definitive lists of the greatest games of all time. As for its Xbox port a year later, the reception was surprisingly much the same, Despite the obvious downgrades, the reviews rolled in just slightly under the PC version. Many outlets considered it to be just as good as the original release, albeit with the obvious graphical and performance drawbacks. But the port was mostly applauded for just how impressive it was, providing pretty much the same Half-Life 2 experience despite its shortcomings. When checking out ports like this, it's usually somewhat of a mixed bag. Taking games that are considerably advanced and putting them on hardware that, well, isn't, doesn't always work out so well. But I think the more important part is taking a look at how impressive they truly can be, and ultimately, Half-Life 2's Xbox port is just that. I can't deny that it is, in fact, probably the worst way to experience an otherwise fantastic game, but the fact that the developers managed to get it running on this platform at all with such little compromise really is a technical feat of sorts, even if its performance is kind of unremarkable to say the least. But Half-Life 2 would later be ported to the next-gen consoles with the Orange Box release in 2007 which kind of led this version to fall between the cracks a bit. Nonetheless, I enjoyed my time replaying parts of Half-Life 2, even if it was only at an average of like 20 FPS.